you're probably aware, 2021 marked the 100th anniversary of the Lipton Cup uh, sailed in mullet boats. Uh, and I've asked Ron Copeland, an ex-commodore of the Ponsonby Cruising Club, and probably the most authoritative expert on the mullet boats in the country, to give us a bit of an overview of how it all evolved. So Ron, um, can you tell us a little bit about the evolution of the mullet boats? As I understand it, these boats were originally fishing vessels that were designed to bring the fish as quickly as possible to the shores in Auckland. Yeah, originally um, they were 24 footers and a lot of them were Italian fishermen and a lot of the boats were named uh, with Italian names. Fishing in the shallow waters of the Auckland Harbour uh, for mullet, also dredging for mussels in the Firth of Thames. So they go back to 1860, because they had no refrigeration they would sail them back to Auckland and put scales under the boom and uh, weigh the fish and sell them to the people hopping on the ferries in downtown Auckland. Later on they are trying to beat each other back to sell their catch so uh, they started to pile more and more sail on them. Normally there was only two men that sailed these things in all weathers, uh, very very seaworthy boats, uh, very shallow uh, so they get into the the creeks and shallow uh, estuaries of the Auckland Harbour. So once they started to put some more sail on they decided they would race each other and develop from there and around the turn of the century they became the poor man's keeler virtually so a lot of them were built by the boat builders or, or guys building them themselves and uh, raced in the anniversary regattas and things like that and they've developed from there. Is it fair to say that um, the mullet boat fraternity would have evolved into some of the sort of top sailors I'm talking about recreational as in sailing competitively uh, so that's how that's how they came about oh absolutely they're very difficult boats to sail or, or they've got, got so much sail on them and with the big wooden spars and that on them the the 22 footers had sort of up to tw uh, 24 foot main booms on them the spinnaker booms were uh, 22 feet uh, so the length of the boat is what the spinnaker booms were uh, they were three and a half inch um, solid Oregon poles to get the spinnaker poles out, uh, two men virtually, uh, mm. and um, all cotton sails, jib staysail, never had topsails on them, but uh, big, big rigs on them. Mm. Continuing on the fact that they were probably all over canvas by the sounds of it, but I've heard that most of these mallet boats uh, ended up sunk at some point in their careers. Yeah, every now and again you get it wrong. But, uh, I, I sunk in one years ago. But Do you know how many were built over the years, roughly? I would say, w with the different uh, sizes of them, well over a hundred. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how many remain today? Forty or fifty, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And I know that this boat we're looking at, yeah, Valeria, is well known or renowned for being the first winner of the Lipton Cup. Yes. But she's not the most prolific winner, that was a different vessel called Tamariki. Tamariki, that's right. What was so good about her, why did she win so often? Tamariki was designed and built by Charles Collings who um, had a boat building um, facility on the bottom of St Mary's Bay Road alongside Ponsonby Cruising Club. So we were right alongside the boat builders with their own yeah. ramp and slips and, yeah. and everything there. <coughs> He used to build model yachts. Uh, he also had a tank testing under his house. He would make these model yachts and sail them round West Haven and, uh, and look at what they did and things like that. And he came up with the Tamariki, which was a real freak. And even today, we're looking at the Tamatea here. Uh, this uh, built by Chris McMullen in the early 60s, uh, and it's a Tamariki shaped okay. uh, from the lines of it. Probably every one of these boats have been underwater and in the mud and in various states of disrepair over the years, but you personally have been involved with the restoration and the rescue of Nomad. How did that come about? I was looking to build a Townsend 32 yacht with a whole heap of carry that I had, and uh, my mate said, why don't you go and buy the Nomad? And I said, oh, everyone's tried to buy that in, in the Auckland Harbour, and... Uh, he said, have you seen it? I said, no. And uh, so I went up there and had a look. I couldn't believe it. The decks had floated off it, three yards of mud inside it, uh, and um, buried right up to the gunnel. Uh, the decks were half a mile up the bay, uh, and I, I was just devastated. So um, I went and saw them, and uh, after negotiation, I ended up buying it, um, digging it out of the mud, and, um, and towing it home. Nomad was so special because it belonged to uh, Des Townsend's uh, father 
his father was a cabinet maker and he, he was an incredible woodworker and it was the queen of the mullet boats, there was nothing like it. Uh, it cabinetry, the finish inside it, everything about it was just no, no other mullet boats ever been produced like it. So Dez became a very good, and his father became very good friends with my wife and I and uh, Dez said all his boats, uh, the uh, mid-sections of the Nomad is what inspired his uh, towns and designs and um, so it's a very special boat uh, for a lot of reasons and an exceptional sea boat. So Ron, this is the Lipton Cup uh, and we sailed the centenary event this year. Uh, it was made by the same people that made the America's Cup. How did this one come about? Tommy Lipton was very impressed with New Zealand yachts, uh, the Logan Brothers and uh, Baileys. Logan's particularly um, were exporting yachts all around the world and they were cleaning everything up in England, uh, Australia, America. And he heard about all this and, and he wrote to the boating magazines and the uh, Star Herald and the newspapers and said, I'll, I will give a uh, trophy for an interclub challenge. I invite the clubs to write to me and say what type of boats they would use for this challenge. <coughs> point in time we had a tin shed down the bottom of uh, St Mary's Bay Road. Flag officers of the day got dressed up in their suits and bowler hats, hopped on the ferry, went over to the Masonic Hotel, stood outside the Masonic Hotel and had their photo taken and uh, wrote a um, letter back to Tommy Lipton with this photo and said uh, <coughs> that we race for these, uh, race these 22 foot mullet boats which were very prolific in those at that time. These are the type of boats that we, we would use to race for the trophy. Heard nothing back for a year or two. Next thing, this magnificent trophy turns up, uh, which they couldn't believe. Um, Do you know what amount of silver has been used yeah, to create it? Three and a half kgs in the cup. Three and a half mm. kgs. Yeah. This class has been alive for a hundred years. Yeah. Uh, what does the future hold, do you think? I mean, is there still a core of enthusiasts? There is. Um, they're an incredible uh, boat to sail. They're very exciting. Um, big sails, big rig. Um, and uh, if you get them in the groove, they're just, just something else. That, um, but that's great. So, um, I mean, long may it continue. It's a yes. remarkable story. It's a remarkable history. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's good to be part of it. John Ackleson from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.